the version 3 of the controller board is ready now we'll test and i'll show you some of the features powering on so at the right side as all of my controller these are the lpf button so the radio is now tuned at 40 meter with rtty that's tx uh, let's change the mode to voice and powering up to 50 percent test 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 hello hello cq cq all one two three one two three one two three test 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 okay so this is the touch enable we have cat control for icom radio that i'll show in another video there is bcd and man v for yeshu but i don't have any yeshu with me so i cannot check or test i have done it with the with feeding it with the voltage uh, the rotary selection i don't have a rotary switch with this amplifier but it, it works so here are the four temperature meter uh, at this moment two ntc has been installed temperature one and temperature two uh, one is temperature one is the heat sink temperature temperature two is showing the mrf 300 registers mosfets temperature it's a little bit high uh, here all the menus are sex self-explanatory so let's go to the menu button uh, i haven't tested antenna a and b uh, because i don't have a dual antenna port uh, rxtx relay board this is the menu it's a little bit bright in the video so we were in home this is the diagnosis screen so in this screen uh, it will show you if we go to rtty again let me go to rtty and then tx so here it will show all the detail you need to make sure that the band selection is okay before TXing. So if you have any error, it will also show you here. Okay. So here you will you will see all the like the controllers input voltage, like uh, the temperature in millivolt, the digital temperatures degree. Uh, millivolt with the SWR bridge voltage for LPF input and antenna also the voltage of the main supply and the current also all, all the all the inputs you'll see here let's go back uh, this is the interesting one setting so everything the calibration is in the software and here uh, the calibration we have another page sorry not this one uh, here only the software protection we can put few of the software protection like the temperature and output power protection voltage and protection current but there is an asterisk here uh, it says that the software protection is not like it's a secondary failsafe so from here we can change the maximum watt the scale of the graph power graph 
also a bit cold type and uh, maximum scale of the temperature and the PWM of the fan so let's say if, if you have a 30 kilohertz PWM fan then we change here we change to 30 we press apply so it says setting set please restart SSPA so actually uh, only these protection setting need restarting the rest of the things on the fly change but it's better to reset the SSPA so the new settings loads properly so let's change it back to 25 kilohertz because I have a 25 kilohertz fan apply here we can enable disable like if you have one NTC you just disable the second NTC or if you don't have an NTC you disable it then the main display it will show up let me show you so it will be here you see it will be zero so if you only enable the second NTC so the second second temperature is showing uh, my digital sensor actually I'm out of all the digital sensor I broke all of them so if you have like uh, one digital sensor you click if you have a second digital sensor in parallel you can actually uh, install two digital sensor more than two actually but we have program for two then you can enable this one uh, then auto band voltage auto band bcd rotary uh, if you want four meter band if your lpf support four meter then you enable that uh, let's disable the four meter if you have cat control you enable cat so cat will show in another day so let's apply we disable the 4 meter so now you see 4 meter is not showing previously 4 meter was here and because we enabled cat so the frequency display came here uh, the cat control icon cat control uh, it will work like if, if we change the frequency in the radio uh, the frequency will change here and if cat is selected then uh, the lpf band this touch will not work the lpf band will automatically change as per the frequency but that's another video i will show later so let's go back to menu again then the setting so that's all uh, in the setting uh, we have on board on the controller we have some protection hardware level protection so it's like a hybrid hardware and software so we have antenna SWR protection LPF SWR protection high input this is interesting if we set it for a specific input power then anything goes above it the amplifier will go to protection So let's get back now we have the meter calibration this is the meter calibration so we go to meter so all the all the configuration we don't need to write in the configuration the calibration so how we are gonna do the calibration so let me put it to RTTY and we click it to reset then I have a inline in SWR watt meter and a dummy load connected so I just click PTT so it says 6084 and from the meter I see that 
at this moment we picked like let's say 480 watt we press ok press apply uh, calibration set so automatically the software will calculate the calibration factor same for input power like we do in the radio we have 40 watt so just say 40 right for the current also uh, same way now uh, we can make it zero pt it it and then check the reading with the multimeter or clamp meter and put it in milliampere and apply that will do the calibration for the ampere meter after this we have the band calibration band setting so here we can actually select automatically but at this moment we don't have a rotary or bcd so let's say uh, from the radio you select 80 meter then 80 meter is on our lpf bank 2 so the value will come you just click on there automatically it will propagate the data so you do one by one all the band and you apply and that bcd value will be saved so it will work with any any kind of radio with different bcd configuration similarly band voltage so if your radio has different band voltage you just check the volt here so let's say it's a 900 millivolt so you know that the radio is in 20 meter so 20 meter is this one so you click here now zero came because it's zero here so if it was 900 the 900 would come here and you press apply uh, it would save in the memory bank similarly for rotary also you can you can configure it so that uh, remote portion there is a onboard esp chip for wi-fi remote uh, i'm not I haven't started actually this remote part so it's for future use or somebody else can program it then we have the cat so at this moment uh, while working on it I had an ICOM IC7000 with a CIV port that one I did so you put the hex for the address in hex format and the baud rate then we can test cat if cat matches the frequency will come here the 7300 i'll do it on the second position let's go back info so here is the about information and it will show you the firmware version and all these things let's go back uh, if there is a error in the system so by pressing let's say we have an error uh, let me make an error okay let's say we have an error and then we restart First, it will reset the external protection board and then it will restart the controller board itself. The display will not change, so we can go back. So let's quickly, quickly do that again. Restart. So you see, temperature is not there. Voltage is not there, so everything came. The fan speed. Uh, depends on the temperature now let me show you the controller board itself 
My cabinet is a bit messy. So all the cables. Uh, I have used a lot of ferrite because of the cramped setup. I do have a lot of RFI. For input as the blower, I have used this cheap Chinese with the blower meter I bought from AliExpress. So that's all. In another video, I'll show you the cap. Thank you.